Steve now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 429th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, and I'm back from the netherworld uh, with my with my co-host, uh, the fluffiest whimsicott. Hi, hi. And and our, as knowledgeable as ever, P. McGee. Hello. Yeah, we're here. We're having a party. I'm back. Uh, I Yay. every <laughs> dad's home. Put the put the uh, stop the party. You know, that is back. <laughs> um, um, I mean, I, I like it better when you're here. <laughs> it's less responsibility. That was the longest hiatus I've taken from the show. I think in literally like six years. <laughs> I mean, it's totally fair. Yeah, no, it was completely fair. Uh, but welcome to the Puckle podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name that I came up with when I was 16, because that's what 16-year-olds do. Uh, and we talk everything here, Pokemon, from the trading card game to the video game to... I, uh, Pokemon Home? Is that a thing? I mean, I know you guys talked about it last week. Yeah. Uh, or at least the the other crew, I talked about it last week, and I talked about it before then. Uh <laughs> But we, it's we definitely about, a thing. It's a thing that man, man, I I couldn't believe it. So so many people had issues with that, and they're just like, man, I can't believe that there's this many issues with Pokemon Home, blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, remember when? And well, the problem is like, I don't think so. Like, it, I've been doing this long enough that I it's, I have a hard time re- remembering that like not everybody was around in 2013. I can't even wrap my mind around someone not remembering the utter mess that was pokemon bank yeah oh my gosh before it even released <laughs> like before it no, even no, no, released no 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 so so pokemon bank for whatever so like this was like in the beginning of like online video game infrastructure and so this this is just a fun like little video game story like hashtag did you know gaming right about mm-hmm. about this is just gaming history and so like all the in- online infrastructure for i think it was the playstation 3 still at the time uh, the uh, Nintendo network was finally becoming a thing that we still didn't pay for, but it was becoming a thing and they were actually gaining infrastructure. And then the uh, Microsoft Xbox online infrastructure. And so that Christmas season in 2013, like all of them failed at one point or another because mm-hmm. they just couldn't. They did. They underestimated the load that the servers were going to take and they all failed. And so uh, Nintendo servers went down like real hard during that Christmas season. And it was like a week and a half that they were just doing rolling blackouts to like try to repair everything and add things on. And the thing that caused this, like the catalyst for that was because they said, you know what, we're, you know when we're going to release Pokemon Bank? December 24th in Japan and December 27th, the rest of the world. And, yeah. and also we're going to make it log in three times every time yep. someone <laughs> tries to access the server. Yep. So it was poorly written. Uh, so all of the Japanese players that downloaded on December 24th tried logging into Pokemon Home. They ended up logging in every time you log into Pokemon Home three times, which ended up crashing the Nintendo servers. And they said, nope, this isn't coming out to the rest of the world, and said, we don't know when it'll be, question mark. Please understand. Yeah, please understand that we we made a bad app. And then everybody's like, why is Pokemon Home not working exactly the way we thought it would work? And I'm like, I don't know. I Because like everybody's downloading it on day one. And I'm like, mm-mm, not downloading it day one. Mm-mm. And they're just like, why not? I'm like, there's going to be some problems if I put my Pokemon in there. I know there's yeah. going to be some problem. And you know what happened? We had the hyper training incident. Where like people were having a lot of issues getting Pokemon properly uh, with hyper training would get erased when they went to Pokemon Home and then came back out. The hyper training would yep. be erased. They're fixing that next week, thankfully. In a ten, in a ten hour patch. Yeah, a ten hour patch. <laughs> I would just like to point out, like that's how messed up Pokemon Home is. Like that's how messed up it is. It's a ten hour oopsie. Are they at least gonna let us see another like forest cam while they're doing that? Because- no, <laughs> that would be cute. That, I mean, there, there's so many cool things you could do. I, I would honestly, it, so back in 2006, 2007, when Diamond and Pearl first came out, that was when we first got online connectivity with Pokemon, and we used to have this really cool website that was like PokemonGTS.com. Yeah, remember that? And and it would literally just show the trades like that were currently happening. 
You know how zen that would be as like a Twitch stream? Oh, yeah. You know what? I think this is a missed opportunity. TPCI, I'm here whenever you're ready to send me the check. (laughs) (laughs) We have a P.O. box in the show notes. Because I think that would be a really cool stream idea, and they should really do. I mean, people watch like um, the, for example, there's uh, there. Well, I don't think it's online anymore, but there was a channel on Twitch called Aus Love A U S Love. Oh yeah. And these guys, these guys would just uh, essentially hack a bunch of Pokemon, send them out on Wonder Trade, and then every once in a while, you could like submit tickets and get like a custom one done. Yeah. I think I, I got one of their Pokemon once. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they just got sent out, like, all the time. And so, like, they, they always had a stream going. And people watch that, I mean, honestly, just to get Pokemon. But I think people would honestly just... If there was a an official Pokemon GTS stream doing that, I think people... I think that would get views. And I don't know why it would, but it would. Well, because you can make it a drinking game. Like, <laughs> take a drink... You take a drink every time a legendary is actually traded for a Route 1 Pokemon. Or stuff like that. <laughs> You know? <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Two drinks every time a shiny is traded for absolute crap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But uh, how, how have you guys been? What have you been up to lately? Ooh. Pretty much the usual. Pokemon-wise, I have decided to start my own uh, whimsy log, I guess we'll Ooh. call it. Yeah, you have to name yeah. it for yourself because you made that joke way too long ago. Yeah. <laughs> so first, explain what that is because people don't know what it is anymore because I keep forgetting that we've been doing this for so long that people don't remember <laughs> our jokes. Yeah, you guys were like casually mentioning it to me and I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> so I, I could use the refresher too. It, it's actually what the person who invented it, I think, calls a global Nuzlocke. But since I mentioned it on the show, people in the Puckle community have named it after me, which is awkward and weird. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so... You start with a Generation 1 game, or a remake, I suppose, and you Nuzlocke it. And you use Dupes Claws, which is when in a Nuzlocke, you know, you have a Rattata already, you don't catch another Rattata, you get another chance to catch maybe a Pidgey or a Weedle. Then, if you manage to beat Kanto with that Nuzlocke, you carry over the Dupes Claws to your Johto game. So if you already had, I don't know, a, a Rattata again... Yeah. In Kanto, you get a chance to maybe catch instead a Sentret or a Hoodoot in oh. your first route in Johto. And so on and so on and so on. And you keep playing and keep trying to Nuzlocke the games in order until you get to the very last one. Hmm. And you carry the dupes clause over every single time so that the pool of Pokemon you've actually used before keeps growing and you have more chances to use newer Pokemon from the subsequent generations. Hmm. And if you beat the entire challenge, you've beaten a global Nuzlocke or Whimsilocke as it's called around these parts. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's a fun concept. I, I play, I like using it a, uh, a slightly different version of that. I mean, because you, I, I mean, it's a Nuzlocke. There, there are no rules. There, it's whatever you yeah. get. And I, I think people do get caught up in that and don't realize it. And the point is just to play fun. So, like, I, I like to, um, what I'm working on with the YouTube right now is I'm playing a blue Nuzlocke. And the idea is instead of just being like hardcore Dupes Claws, it's just Dupes Claws on like the Pokemon that were in your final party in the Hall of Fame. Oh. That way you can, like, that way you don't get screwed, more or less, right? <laughs> because, especially in like Gen 4, like, I feel like you can really end up messed up. Mm. Because the, Gen 4 repeats a lot of old stuff. Um, God forbid you caught a Ponyta, you're never catching a fire type again. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, uh, yeah, I, I like doing that instead, just so you, there's like, there's like a little bit of control. That way you, at least your team always has a different composition. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not always, I'm using Gen 2 Pokemon and because I already played Gen 1. It's, uh, especially Gen 2, because Gen 2 has a lot of repeats for Gen 1 as well. Yeah. Well, I mean... The dupes clause is usually optional in an Nuzlocke. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're not, like, further limiting yourself. You're giving yourself more chances to use newer stuff. Exactly, But, yeah. you know, as you said, everyone can make up their own Nuzlocke rules, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, and mine just makes it so I have to use something different each time. Like, mm-hmm. I can't I can't play black, black and white and then play black and white too. And then pick the same starter and then have like the same team composition. Like I can't, I can't use Crocodile twice, right? Yeah. Um, which I think is really big and important. <laughs> so what about you, P. Mickey? How's everything going? 
Good, good. In the Pokemon world, I was finishing up my fifth round of UUTC this week, um, which went well. So I'm excited now for Top Cut. This is my first Puckle tourney, so this is my first time kind of doing this whole process. So it's been a very fun start so far. I, re- I really have no complaints at all. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what people bring to Top Cut now that we can bring in some of the Alolans and Kanto starters and then some of the forms mm-hmm. that come with them. So I'm excited about that. And then I've been playing a little bit of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon on the side just to get ready for uh, the release that comes out in a few weeks now. I'm waiting to just go in blind. For uh, Mystery Dungeon? Yeah. It'll be fun. I've never played it before. I've never pl- I've played uh, like... I played Super Mystery Dungeon for like a hot two hours, and then I fin- just finished the <laughs> tutorial. That was a rough one to start yeah, with. Yeah, I hated that game. Yeah, yeah. And then they're just like, oh, you finished the tutorial. Here's a fi- level 50 Salamence. And it's just like, cool. What's going on with this game? Yeah, that made no sense. I was very disappointed with the mm-hmm. direction it went after Explorers of Sky. So I've been, explain- I've been playing Explorers of Sky because that's the most fun one. But I don't remember the story for the original that well. So I'm excited that I can kind of play the story through again mm-hmm. for the original. Because they have fun stories. The first couple do. I bought a copy of Explorers of Sky and people want me to play it. And I just haven't done it. I need to do it. I, oh. I feel like there'd be some content there. Because like, these are Pokemon games that, I can- that are like apparently good and I can play blind. <laughs> Yeah, there's not many that there's not a lot of things where, that I can do with that. Mm-mm. And so these are these are rare exceptions. So like every once in a while, I'm like, man, I kind of want to play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. And I think Puckle stops me from doing that because I'm like, I could just do this in my free time and do it. And I'm like, <laughs> or I could save not ever playing it for Puckle. And I'm like, you know what? Let's save it for Puckle. So dep- <laughs> I think depending because like I'm forced into this thing now with Oshawott. All right. Um, on Patreon because we hit the $850 milestone. So we have to, uh, Oshawott and I have to, we're going to voice act out the, the, the Pokemon <laughs> Mystery Dungeon game together. We're going to do it on Twitch, but then it'll be on YouTube. I'm really looking forward to that. I can't wait. That'll be, that'll be an experience. Let me tell you, uh, oh, whatever, yeah. whatever Pokemon, whatever Pokemon's my partner, we're just going to try to, we're going to see if we can just name him Oshawott. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead with it because Oshawott unfortunately can't be a partner. Uh, the yeah, game, the game, the game's like the game's like semi true to its roots. Mm. Uh, semi true. Yeah, the Mega Evolution is. There's Mega Evolution, reason. and then there was a Lucario, and so I'm very confused. Yeah, yeah. On so I'm many very levels. To see how that plays out. Yeah, Mega Evolution because it's the mechanic that everybody loves, but TPCI. <laughs> <laughs> the mechanic everybody loves, but Game Freak for some reason. That hurts my soul. Uh, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for DLC to come, where it's just like Megas come back. And it's like that oh. that would be nice. That would be really nice. That would be amazing. Like every single time I'm going through the wild area and it's the right weather and I see a my wild, I'm like, oh I should catch th- Oh, wait. <laughs> Megas were Megas were probably the best mechanic. Like hands down. Like I, I think that was I, I think Dynamax is is interesting. Obviously in OU singles, but I don't I don't they like banned it. Yeah. Granted, I don't know how much I I've lost a lot of faith in Smogon uh, in, like, the past three years and, like, hmm. their judgment. I, I do I, – I, if Seth thinks it's a problem to an extent, I think Seth uh, it's probably is probably wrong. And so Seth wasn't okay with Dynamax. I think it would be – I don't know. It depends on how it ha- it's handled. I think their biggest mistake was not requiring it to be an item and making everybody capable of Dynamaxing. I think that was their biggest problem. Yeah, they tried to fix the Mega problem, but they went about it a really weird way. I mean, it plays fine in like BSS, because like, I've been playing UUTC, and that's been fine in there. Oh, in BSS, in, B- in faster formats, I think it's fine, um, because yeah. especially with BSS, because it's a 3v3, right? Mm-mm. You're talking like 10 turns. Yeah, I think when you're talking like 6v6, like that's when your problem comes. Yep. Yeah. There's just uh, too many variables where there's like six potential Dynamax Pokemon. Yep. I think that's too many problems. I I I mean I understand to an extent because it really feels like they they think this is the way you should be playing Pokemon, and I I am upset by that still mm-hmm. <laughs> because because of a lot of other issues. But uh, that's just me. I I'll I'll wrap up real quick and, and uh, so I've been working on uh, on just making like a Gen three living decks for funsies. Ooh. Ooh. You call that fun. For funsies. <laughs> we're going to put funsies in quotes. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're going to... Mostly because... I mean, that's like the hardest living decks, I think, to complete, in my opinion. Yeah. That, that's the hardest living decks. Um, I'm also just trying to complete like a living decks every generation for home and just like send them all over. That way mm. I have like... I have... 
like it was just like, oh, I need, you know, Zapdos with its hidden ability and I can just pull it, right? Yeah. Without a problem. And that way I have all of those things, but then I have the normal abilities because, oh, I caught that in, you know, Gen 3 over here three times. <laughs> <laughs> because because you can, you can I think there's, I, I think I'll probably only go and catch it twice. Uh, I'll probably catch it like once in Leaf Green Fire Red and then another time in like XD Gale of Darkness. Um, just because I want to get the Colosseum and XD Pokemon with like all of their exclusive moves that they can get there because some of those are like still around in like OU oh, and stuff wow. and they're really hard to get like because you still have to bring them up from Gen 3. <laughs> Jeez. You still have to bring them up like it's uh it, it's nuts to get some of the moves on some of these Pokemon. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I'm starting with Gen 3 because it's the hardest one. Uh, it's the hardest one to do. So I just want to get it done. Yeah, <laughs> by far, because, oh, man, the, I mean, Gen 3 is, I see Gen 8 is almost in the same vein as, like, Gen 3 at this point, where they're just like, here's not all of the Pokemon we mif- we miffed up. Uh, we're going to get you all the Pokemon eventually, but have fun trying to get them all. <laughs> uh, because, I, I mean, that's what I imagine. I, I, with the DLC direction, I see them just being like, hey, spend $30 a year on us, except for the year that we make a new game. Yeah, but then you have them, like, in one convenient location, yeah. Instead right? of scattered over like yeah. two or three different <laughs> consoles. So. Oh, don't even get me started, especially with like Coliseum, because purifying Pokemon in Coliseum is such a headache. It's yeah. an absolute headache to to purify Pokemon in there, and like it, it takes. I think you spent you can end up spending like hours post game just purifying Pokemon. Oh, it's exhausting. You get three flutes, so you really yep. have to. You, and you know, those are almost always for the dogs. Like yep. if you want to purify those because those so take the longest time. Yeah. Yep. Maybe Tyranitar, but like you're, it's what is it, I think forty eight Pokemon you have to purify, yep. and after like the first ten, they're they take forever to do. Yep. I I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna start playing through those games. I'm probably just gonna do those on Twitch for funsies. Like when I feel like playing, I'm just gonna hop on Twitch and just play. That'd be fun. People can just come and like hang out with me while I attempt to purify everything. Because like the way I play that game when I do it is I always leave like a slot or two open and like I always have like a purifying Pokemon like in rotation. That way like I don't have to have as massive of a post game. But yeah, that that's it. That's where we'll that's where we'll cut this intro. This is probably the longest intro I've ever done. Um mm-hmm. and we're gonna kick everything on over to the news. So cue that epic music. <laughs> Radio Tower. This just in. And welcome to the news. The news it has a lot of things in it, I guess, because this week is going to be Pokemon Day. That's mm. cool. Yeah, Pokemon Day is happening this week, <laughs> which is which has been a holiday for like the past five years. Uh, pretty much, every, pretty much since like the twentieth anniversary, they've been pushing Pokemon Day as like a day that they like do things on. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm gonna put do things in quotes because. I think the I think there are two of them in particular. Like 2016 was the one that we got the Sun and Moon announcement, and then 2019 is when we got the Sword and Shield announcement. Mm. And then they did talk about things like on Pokemon Day in between then, now and then, uh, which was I guess an interesting thing. I don't know. It was it's always been like a really random grab bag of content. Yeah. I mean, it, I suppose it depends on what they've got ready to give us at that point in the year. So kind of, I, I think they do put some things off. I do think it's really cool that they're going to announce a new mythical Pokemon. Um, I'm saddened that a new mythical Pokemon exists because I thought with DLC, we didn't need mythical Pokemon anymore because I'm like, yeah, you know, it's the worst kind of mythical Pokemon is one that has no backstory and it only is in a movie and then you get it and then it doesn't do anything. Yeah. And And that's exactly what this is. I mean, we don't know that you just get it we don't know we don't know it but i have a feeling (laughs) there's hope yet i want to say i i i've learned not to have like because in in the uh in the perfect world what they do is they drop like a free dlc like a small little mini dungeon right and then and then you you can go and get it like that's in the perfect world but you know what this is the pokemon company we have we build up our expectations all of the time and that's not yeah. what they're going to do. And like, honestly, I'm not asking for much. I'm just asking for a cave. Yeah, exactly. Where at the end just, of it, I run into this guy. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for much yeah. else. 
Yeah. I'm asking for a dark Rai event. I'm not asking for much, you know? And you, you let us DLC it and like free DLC and you could use it like, hey, this is the kind of stuff you can look forward to in the Isle of Armor and and in the Crown Tundra, right? But you know Mm-mm. what? They haven't hired me because they don't like my ideas. They're too good. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll leave that on the table. But yeah, we, we've got that happening. There's going to be some special Pokemon Day Raids in Sword and Shield, which is actually really cool. And it kind of goes back to what you were talking about two weeks ago, um, which is Pokemon is just now this game that they can do things in like this because before they couldn't do anything like this. Yeah. Whereas like now in game, you can celebrate these events in these days. I, it's very um, it's it's like Animal Crossing light. I'm very <laughs> into it. Uh, I'm very into it. Uh, we we do have uh, a new trailer for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon that came out this week. That uh, which is exciting. Yeah, it showed off that it was a Mystery Dungeon game, and the art assets improved. Yeah, I'm still getting used to the visual style. Like the the aesthetics is still somewhat jarring, just because it's such a huge different look for Pokemon. But yeah, I'm liking it. Yeah, it's very it. peculiar, but it's very pretty. So. Uh, yeah, Funko has uh, has they just keep dropping new pops like like crazy these past few weeks. Um, it was like we had the we had Mewtwo and Mister Mime Vulpix and I think Psyduck a few weeks ago, and now they just announced a Rattata, Cubone, Growlithe, and Angry Pikachu. A <laughs> regular Pikachu. Pikachu. <laughs> uh, I really want Cubone. I think Cubone would be cute. Yeah, you look cool. I'm into Cubone. Mm. And then they just announced a Vaporeon this morning for a separate thing. Ah, they're just going to keep announcing these because I they have they have the rights to it. So honestly, what they're probably going to do. Oh, it's Pichu. Pichu is the other one they announced. Not uh, not Psyduck. That was what, that, okay. I got that wrong. Because I, I remember looking at the list and being like, huh, that's weird. That's the only Gen 2 Pokemon they put in uh, so far. But I mean, these guys have these guys have access to 190 creatures as Funko Pops. So let them do what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I don't think the Blacephalon Funko Pop is ever coming. <laughs> It's kind of hard to do like a Funko Pop without eyes. It's hard to do a Funko Pop, I think, of... I mean, you can do it with pretty much, I think, every... I, I think it's hard to do it if they're not, like, human-shaped, if that's the if that's the mm. correct word. You know what I mean? Like, like you could do it with Growlithe and Rattata. They're doing really well with, like, basic animals. But I don't know how they would do something like, you know, Paris. Honestly, yeah. I think I think the only one so far that I found vaguely convincing is Bulbasaur. I mean, they're they're cute. They're Funko Pops. I've never bought them, and mm-hmm. I honestly don't want to go down the road. Like, I need to. I need to like pick one or two. <laughs> I need to pick like one or two that I want because I had the problem when I went to Japan, where they had like the sitting cutie plushes at the Pokemon centers, oh. and like you have to make decisions because you can't buy two hundred and fifty of those. Yeah, because that that would be twenty five hundred dollars, and I don't think you're allowed to bring that much back to the United States, and <laughs> so so I you had to make decisions. On that, so I, I made decisions on those, but like I, I like for Funko Pop, I had to do it, or that's just a deep dark hole. I'm already in the amiibo hole, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Already. <laughs> so, so uh, we also got uh, the next series for for what's it called? Oh my gosh, for uh, ranked for battle? ranked battles happening season three, which allows you to bring in pretty much everything that's available except for the legendaries, essentially. Um, you can bring in Kanto and Alolan starters, uh, all regional forms for currently available Pokemon as well. I don't know if you're able to get something like uh, like Alolan Raichu though. Yeah, you can. Can you can you get Alolan Raichu with a oh, Galar mark? That's interesting. Yeah, um, I don't. I, there must think be a you way. Can. Uh, only when they. Huh. I don't. No. Think yeah. You yeah. Can. Yeah. Because you you bring in a a Alolan Raichu and then you breed it with a Galarian Ditto and it'll still the child should still be. Pikachu? Alolan. Like Alolan no, Pikachu. because it's well, Pikachu. I think. There's no Alolan Pikachu. No, not Alolan Pikachu, but like the Pikachu that has like an... Because it said the... I'll have to look this up again, because this is like a yeah, whole thing we, we had, we had Yeah, we had a conversation about this, and it's very confusing. Yeah, they did not explain it well. Because <laughs> like Alolan Raichu, I think, is the only one that falls under this jurisdiction right now. Um, Marowak well, is you not can't, in the you game, can't, right? Yeah, Marowak's so. not in the game, and neither is Executor. So... Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's a problem for either of those. This is just a really weird question. It just in general, you know what I mean? Like this is, the, I think this is the can of worms that they shouldn't have opened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was, I was thinking about this in the car the other day, and I was like, wait, yeah, because like when they open 
up you know trades from go mm -hmm. you can get one from go but it still doesn't have you know the galar mark yeah they fixed it this generation with the regional forms because the only pokemon that was its normal form that evolves into a galarian form this generation is mime jr mm. that's the because mime jr is still mime jr it's not galarian mime jr it's still psychic fairy and then it evolves into mr mime yeah well there's coughing too uh, oh yeah, coughing's the other one. Oh my gosh, coughing's <laughs> he's coughing. forgettable. It's not it's not your fault. Coughing is the problem. Never mind. Coughing's the those are the only two though. Um, yeah, those are the only two. The only reason coughing's forgettable is because coughing should have gotten a Galarian form. <laughs> <laughs> you could have given him a cute little mustache and monocle, and it would have been fine. Um, it would have been great. Yeah, it would not have been fine. Great. Yeah. And it would have worked out just fine. You still make him a poison type. Who cares? You don't need to change his type, and <laughs> you just have a lot of fun with that. But yeah, uh, so you get to use those guys. This goes from March 1st to April 30th. This is a pretty long one, actually. Yeah, it really is. Twice as long as the other. They do also let us bring in all of the new Gigantamax forms that have been, been released. I think almost all of them have been released now. Just five are left. Yeah, Kingler, Lapras, Orbeetle, Colossal, Flapple, Appleton, Toxtricity, Hatterene, Grimmsnarl, All Creamy. Uh, you can go download it now. You can also, there's also a international championship or challenge that's opening up. Uh, you can register until the 27th, which is this Thursday, um, and that runs next weekend, the 28th to the 1st. And if you're actually into collecting CP for actual real-life events, this is one of those few online events. They do like three a year. Or if you do well enough, you can get 50 championship points Yeah, towards your world's invite, which I guess is something. I, I'm more disappointed that we're not more online than we used, than like, like Japan is. Japan's like almost all online. Well, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, no, I would say it's a step in the right direction if we haven't had this direction for the past six years. <laughs> Fair enough. Status quo. That's how I, like, it's a, it's not a step in the right direction if it hasn't progressed, right? Mm. So, yeah, that, that's where we are. Um, right now, we're having Pokemon Community Day, so who cares? You guys aren't going to know that you could, you would have already, you would have missed out on your chance to get a Rhyhorn by the time you listen to the show. Uh, there are going to be, there's new a uh, Pokemon Go Safari Zone in Philadelphia, uh, May 8th through 10th. You can go get some red and blue Pokemon over there, um, as well as some other, other Pokemon as well. It's, it's pretty cool. You can go buy those. Uh, I, the only problem I have with Pokemon Go Safari Z Zone events is that the tickets sell out way too fast. Yeah, that's right here. Because my friends, my friends went and they got themselves tickets for the St. Louis one that's happening at the end of March. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, you want to go to St. Louis? You know, I'm like, you know what? Let's do it, I guess. You know, let's see. And they try to go log back in and buy us tickets for Saturday. Like they got. And they couldn't buy more tickets. They Jeez. were sold out. Like it was within like the 10 minutes that it took to be like, yeah, let's do it. Wow. Yeah. It was It was just like, it, I couldn't believe it. Because like, I, I'm just like, yeah, it'd be fun to do. And on top of that, um, for these kind of events, like uh, my wife works on Saturdays sometimes. So like we have to make sure she can get it off. Right. I, I don't know. I feel a little bit of gatekeeping, a little bit. I, I don't want to be that guy. But at the same time, like, I don't know. Hold more of them, I guess. That'd be nice. I'd love to go to one. I mean, th this is already a step in the right direction. This is far more Safari Zone events than we've had in the past year yeah. in the U.S. So, like, good for them. I'm just hoping we can start hitting, like, more major cities on a regular basis. Like, maybe, maybe have, like, one, I don't want to say per state because that's a lot, but, like, one or two per region every year. I think I think would be nice just so I could get a chance to go. Yeah. I would just like to go. But I mean, I could have gone, but like on Sunday and I'm like, well, then I have to drive back from St. Louis. So mm. no, thank you. That's a six hour drive. Pokemon Home's going to be fixed next week. So that's cool. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It says there's going to be a 10 hour server maintenance on February 24th, 25th in Europe and Australia. But that that's 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 a long time. That's like half a day. Um, I know they're trying to do it like in the late PM, early AM hours so that people aren't affected too much, but that's such a long window. That's such a big window. You're going to, you're going to bug somebody. Uh, they're, yep. they, they've updated the filters so that you can filter out all the requests for mythical Pokemon, on the GTS, because they've never been tradable on the GTS. And I don't know why that's an option to try to trade for it. <laughs> and like, you know how much easier it would be just to be like, yeah, let's exclude this list of names. R right? Like that's all you have to do. Yeah. Wow. I fixed your problem. <laughs> and then there's also, uh, there's a bug because if you complete the Pokedex in home, you can get a uh, uh, Pokeball colored Magearna, not the shiny Magearna, Pokeball colored Magearna. Yeah. Or maybe that is the shiny. I forget. 
No, it's not the shiny. The shiny looks uh, looks a bit different. Like this is the original color, my gear yeah, now. The, the one that color. was in the code for Gen Six, but we never yep. got. We never got. Yep, it, it's kind of like AZ's Floet. Gen si- Six, Gen Seven. I mean. Oof. Yeah, we're never gonna get the AZ Floet either. Oh, I I'm I'm still hung up on that one. You know. Uh, another episode of Twilight Wings also came out this week, which was very exciting. I love the animation for that. I'm not like sold on the stories yet, but like the animation has been great. Uh, it feels very ge- Pokemon Generations to me, which I thought was a fantastic thing in general because Pokemon Generations was just the best thing that ever came out on YouTube for Pokemon, hands down. How long ago was that now? Uh, that was, again, 2016. Uh- <laughs> oh, sorry, I missed that. That's my bad. Yeah, 2016 was... Uh- Oh, no, no, you didn't miss it. Uh, I was just saying again, because all of the good things in Pokemon happened in 2016. Oh, I got you. Pretty much. Yeah, so so Generations was, like, the best, the the best thing ever, because that was, like, 18 episodes, one per week instead of one per month, mind you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it highlighted, like, a bunch of cool stuff from generation to generation. And I, I don't know that there was one of them that I wouldn't say is hype. Like, all of them were, were very hype, in my opinion. So... Uh, I I hope we get something. I would love to see something more like that come out. I honestly think there's room in the current space for Pokemon to run two concurrent animes. I think I think Pokemon is the one company that's big enough to be running two animes at once and doing well. Like you have one that's like the Ash anime that's much more childish, and then you have like a more adult like manga representation of Pokemon. Oh, that would be so cool! It'll never I'm happen. Dreaming for it, yeah. yeah it'll never happen. Mm. Because the manga is, to this day, still the best thing that ever happened in Pokemon. Oh, yes. It is, it is like, the best Pokemon story you could ever read, is the Pokemon manga. Mm-mm. I'm going to go read that today again, now, <laughs> now that I thought about it. But yeah, that is, uh, that's it for all of the big news. There's a couple of things that I want to go ahead and talk about very briefly for Puckle. First of all, being with Pokemon Day this week, we've decided that we're going to be doing a giveaway on our social medias. Um, there's a chance to win a copy of Pokemon uh, Mystery Dungeon DX, and there's going to be a couple more like uh, participation prizes for Pokemon DLC for Sword and Shield. So uh, there, I think there's three prizes total. It's like one, two DLCs and one copy of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Um, do you follow us on social media and you can find out how to sign up. Uh, there's going to be a code later on in this episode that you can listen to and you can type it in. You'll get a lot more entries into it than you'll probably get with being able to do social media stuff. So uh, <laughs> you get a lot of pros for listening to the show today. So definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, we we decided to do that. So I, I'm very excited. I love doing giveaways like this. It's a lot of fun. And you can get a copy of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? Yes. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> It's better than Super Mystery Dungeon. That uh, I don't know if it's a good game or not. I I've just heard like I the consensus in the community is the second the second set of games, Time, Space, and Sky are the best ones, and then these before them aren't bad. No. Um. And and then everything else is hot garbage. <laughs> like that's that's the sense I've gotten from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Well, you see, I didn't even finish the tutorial in the Super Mystery Dungeon. <laughs> that, to be fair, that tutorial was stupid. That tutorial was very stupid. Uh, but, yeah, on that note, uh, we're going to do that. Uh, a couple other things if you are a patron. Uh, don't forget that on February 26th and 29th that we are going to be doing more giveaways for your Pokemon. Please check the post on Patreon.com for more details on that. And uh, I guess, Pima, did you want to talk about this? I don't know if we want to spend too much time on it, but... I can briefly go over yeah, it. Yeah, go over I won't, it. I won't so, it too much. So, so there's a stretch goal on Patreon just for everybody that's out there, and it's a twelve hundred dollar stretch goal, and it's a big undertaking of content that we want to try to do. And P. McGee is going to explain because he came up with all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. We hit the thousand dollars so quickly, we didn't even get time to make a goal for that. So we have a twelve hundred dollar <laughs> goal. Um, I'm not sure if you guys really liked Shiny Obstagoon or you really liked us, but you we went from the eight fifty goal over a thousand before we had a chance to even plan anything. So we're trying to get the twelve hundred dollar goal established so you guys can be excited about that and hopefully participate. Um, so the gist of it is is that staff is going to do a tournament, a sixteen person tournament. So all the voice guests on the show as well as some of the main moderators you see on the discord like oshawott or dennis or ribby 
And so the goal is we'll do a 16 person tournament. Everyone that's at the $5 tier or higher will be able to complete a poll after we break the $1,200 goal. And so they get to pick whoever their favorite co-host is or whoever they think can win a 16 person tournament. Don't really have a rule set for that yet. We need to figure that out, but you can pick your, your staff member that you want to support. You basically endorse them kind of like how. Leon would have endorsements on his cape that he drug around through the whole game, uh, if you want like a visual metaphor. And then we're going to open up some Discord servers, or not some servers, but some channels on our Discord for each individual staff member. So you get to hang out in that channel with them, help them prep a team. Um, just kind of a fun place to be. Everyone will get a cool little role, kind of like yeah. Green Tauros or UUTC or any of the other ones. We'll find a, find a little color for that and a name for it. And then the best part, I think, is the winning person. So maybe... Our Sigma wins the whole tournament. Everyone that endorsed our Sigma will get their name engraved on whatever kind of trophy or prize we find. So it'll be a kind of a fun way. There's lots of ways for the patrons to be involved. They can endorse somebody. They can hang out in the channels. Um, and if they are on the winning team, they get to have their name permanently engraved into the championship trophy. We still need to figure out what that needs to look like. So if you have ideas, definitely DM me because I don't know what to do with that yet. <laughs> we could probably get something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I think we would have the funds to find a cool little prize. Oh, absolutely. The way, the way I'm kind of envisioning the seating is that the person gets the most endorsements will get the number one seed because that makes the most sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping you guys will be interested in that. We will be definitely talking about that a lot more once we cross the 1200 goal. Um, Thatch and Whimsicott are going to be commentating on stream for every game for the tournament. So you'll be able to hang out on Twitch while we do it and see how all that goes, see how you're your pick it does. So it should be a lot of content and a lot of ways for you to be involved. So hopefully that gets you motivated and is a worthwhile goal to help us reach. It sounds like a lot of fun anyway. Yes. Yeah, I'm excited for it. But yes, on that note, we are going to end the news and we're going to kick it on over to Puckle's Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. <laughs> And welcome to Puckle's Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. So we've got a significant number, by significant I mean five, number, number of questions <laughs> to ask uh, <laughs> to ask your your fellow co-host. It's been a couple of weeks, okay? I got to get my transitions and my roles going again. And you guys can, these guys are going to be answering together as a team, trying to beat their fellow co-host in a race to 30 points where they can win $20 to whatever store that we make merch at one day. And they, they are going to answer these five questions together. One of these questions will be worth more than one point. And they have a hint that they can use as a lifeline. However, if they get all of the questions correct, they can cash that hint in for an extra point, making a possible total of seven points today. Um, this segment, as always, is brought to you by AnimeGravy.com, your one-stop shop for all cool things, anime and nerd, and just cool things in general. And they're just really nice, and they also make really cool stuff. Yes. So definitely go check out AnimeGravy.com. On that note, though, we are going to jump right into these questions. All these questions are, come from our Discord server, so if you want to try to stump the co-hosts, you can go on over there and try to do it. So let's go. Question number one this week is from Chief Pancake. What is the only unevolved Pokemon that can learn Quiver Dance? Ooh. Interesting. Love this. So, unevolved Pokemon that can learn Quiver Dance. Are we assuming it's a bug or we think it could be elsewhere? So, the only non-bug Pokemon that I can think of that learns Quiver Dance is Petalil. And Lilligant. And I don't know if Petalil is correct. I don't know. Hmm. But I have to tell you, Petalil is the first thing that came to my mind. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to considering that one. Um, I'm trying to think of what other bugs might learn it. He did say, um, I'm sorry, he did say unevolved and not, not fully evolved. Correct, Thatch? Yes, unevolved. Okay. So there's Petalil. I'm, does Cutie fly? Run it by chance? Um, I don't think... See, this is where we wish we played Little Cup. 
<laughs> this is true. And also, uh, would a single stage Pokemon count as an unevolved Pokemon? I guess, yeah. Ah, see, that's the trick. Ah. <laughs> that's the trick. Shoot. So, single stage that learns Quiver Dance. I'm pretty sure that... Oh, this is a harder question. Though. And Quiver Dance is one of my favorite moves. I'm trying to think of who learns it. Something that... Mm, because I'm... It wouldn't go to Aura Choreo, would it? They don't get Quiver Dance? I'm guessing not. Um... Ah, um, uh, actually... Um... Huh. They do get a lot of dance move. Like, a lot of dance moves, but... I'm gonna need an answer. I'll default to you. I really have no idea. I have no idea either, but I think Oricorio is such a cool idea that I'm gonna go with that one. Oricorio is unfortunately incorrect. The answer is Cutie Fly. Ah! <laughs> oh! Oh. Right? Wow, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mickey. No, I had no confidence when I said that. It would just it popped in my head as because most bugs that like, you know, you get butterfreeze or venomous or whatever, like their first form obviously can't learn it. Or their yeah. middle form. So Cutie Fly was just like, ah, maybe. Yeah. It's already like a bug with wings. You're right. That was a very good point. Sorry. Nah, that's good. Our next question is going to be from Gmather27. What is the only badge that it's that's had its that has had its name used for multiple badges? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of rock type gym leaders and a lot of water type gym leaders. Yeah. So water was definitely one I was considering. I wanna say like something like Cascade or hmm. But, but, wait, 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 wait. So, I'm thinking, are there something like Cascade, or Boulder, or Stone? See, I can believe the Boulder badge kind of thing. Especially since, like, the Gen 6 Rock-type gym leader was a climber, you know? That's true. And we had three, four, f what, no, yeah, three, four, and six all had a Rock-type gym leader. Oh, yeah. There's been a lot of Rock-type gym leaders. A lot of them. I could believe rock, I could believe water, but I couldn't think of... I don't know if Cascade has been used twice, and I can't think of it the other Probably badges. Probably not. I don't know a lot of badge names, so I'm kind of deferring to you again. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I want to say Boulder, but uh, the question is, do you want to use our hint, or do you, want, do you want to keep that for the bonus point question? I think the bonus point question at this point. Yeah, it's worth I it. I think. So, it's okay. I went 0 for 2 last time I was on the first two, and we came back in the back <laughs> three. So maybe that's our path. All right. Let's 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 go on, on the on the tough path. Uh, we're going to say the boulder badge. Is that, is that fine, Mickey? That's fine with me. Okay. The boulder badge. The boulder badge is unfortunately incorrect. The answer is the fairy badge because uh, it turns out Gen 8 was very unimaginative in their jet in their badge names and they're all named after the type and it turned out in gen 6 they were getting just as lazy and like half the badges are just named after the type as well uh so that in, sucks. Interesting. in gen 6 the fairy badge is just called fairy badge uh also fun fact in gen 6 the psychic badge is also just called the psychic badge <laughs> <laughs> because god forbid we come up with good names right guys um yeah hmm. It turns out Pokemon's been dropping the ball here, guys. Who would have thunk? How dare they? Yeah. Our badges are better. Yeah, right? <laughs> Our next question is from Yamper Lover, parentheses, cat. Uh, it's your Pokedex entry question. It's Pokede Pokemon Shield entry reads, It accumulates negative ions in the atmosphere to blast out 10,000 volt lightning bolts. Who's this Pokemon? Okay. So... Yamper has been around on the Discord as of late, and there's two things I know about Yamper. They like electric Pokemon. Yeah. And their name was Jolteon before. So I could believe it could be either the Yamper line or Jolteon, if we're trying to narrow it down for shield entries. Okay, but it... Because mm. <laughs> I could believe it could be Jolteon. I believe it could be a Yamper or a Boltund. Um 
this is just me trying to guess off the person because I, I don't know how yeah. confident I feel. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I don't remember this one because I played Sword. Man, I played Sword too, so I, I don't know. Can you read it again, Thatch? It accumulates negative ions in the atmosphere to blast out 10,000 volt lightning bolts. Okay, so wait, 10,000 volt lightning bolts? That's a very specific number that's usually associated with the Pikachu line. Like, hmm. you remember the name of the move? Yeah, ten, the, was it 10,000 volt? Volt, lightning bolt, yeah, something like that. Uh, so, actually, it might be someone in the Pikachu line. And also, when it says, like, in the atmosphere, like, the Pikachu line has, like, um, the tail that goes up. Do they get Ion Deluge? Oh, that's a good question. Because um, I think Jolteon no? does. Ooh. I mean, that, that's, that's I guess, my other thought. I'm going to need an answer. I'm going to go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with McGee on this one. Let's say Jolteon. Jolteon is correct. Oh, thank Aha. God. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> good job, McGee. <laughs> All right, so this next question has three answers instead of two. I will give you, because you've messed up so badly uh, so far, <laughs> I will give you one point per answer. Um, this is from Claude9, and he wants to know, what Pokemon introduced in Generation 2 are actually native to Kanto? And by that he means, which Gen 2 Pokemon yeah. are only catchable in Kanto in Gold and Silver? Markrow? Slugma? Houndour? Wasn't half yes. hour only in? Um, I th I think I think yes, but since we have the hint, we can make sure. Yeah, that's fine. I'd rather use it for this. This is a dual type Pokemon with one type being dark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I, th I think I think we got them. <laughs> Slugma, Houndour, and Murkrow are all correct. Ooh, go us! <laughs> you guys are four for four now. Um, moving on, our last question, as always, is a base stat question. And this one is looking at all Pokemon, uh, including the Mega Evolutions and stuff, all Pokemon that have ever existed. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from British Gent. Which ice type has the highest base HP? Hmm. Interesting. So there's Avalug, would I think be up there? Soul defense on that one, but it, it is a pretty a pretty tanky boy. Galarian Darmanitan's not trash, but I don't think he's the top. No, it's a Darmanitan. He's got no. He's got he's got fifty fives for like the defense, but his HP is I think actually over a hundred. But I, I don't think that's oh. the highest. Yeah. Oh. Well, we do have uh, a few legendaries. Like we got you know Black Kyrim, White Kyrim, Kyrim. <laughs> Those are not bad. You know? No. What's Articuno? I don't remember how high Articuno is. Uh, mm, I, I, I don't know if it's a bulky defensive one, or HP one. I don't think it is. I think it's got like a decent special defense, but it not, not like a ton of HP, but I've never used an Articuno, so I don't That's know. That's fair. Aurorus? Is that defensive? I mean, it's defensive, but how defensive? Uh, yeah. No, well, I, 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 all I remember is it going down in a single hit whenever I tried to hit it with a water type move in Gen 6. <laughs> so, um, that sounds good enough. Like, it didn't even take, like, a steel type or a fighting type move. Like, a water type move was enough, so. Fair enough. Hmm. Mamoswine probably has over 100, but I don't know if it's that yeah, high. Yeah, but I don't know if it's that high, yeah. So I think I think since Thatch was so specific in his introduction, I wanna say it's either, you know, black Kyrim or white Kyrim. Uh they might be the same, but I'm not sure. I'll default to you. Oh, again? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the weight. The weight is real. <laughs> you went with me on Jolteon and that ended up being correct. So I'll I'll default exactly. to you because I'm really not sure. Okay. Um uh, pick pick a collar. Uh, white. Okay, white Kyrim. <laughs> white Kyrim is incorrect. The actual answer is Lapras. Oh, oh, I forgot about Lapras. Lapras is a bulky boy. Oh. For that, unfortunately, you guys got four points this week. So that does change up the standings because everybody's still really close. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and sort this column. In first place, we have Linian with twelve. 
In second place, we have Whimsicott with 10. Sublime and P. McGee are tied for third with 9. R. Sigma's in fifth with 8. Shamu's in sixth with 6. Seth Vilo and Jushira are tied for seventh with 5. In ninth, we have Basket with 4. And in tenth, we have Scrawn with 3. And that is going to be it for this week. We're going to kick it on over, though, after this short break, and we're going to tell you about the topic. No review for you guys this week. Instead, we've got a code for our giveaway on Twitter, Facebook, and all other social media platforms. Go ahead and use PuckleDX, P-U-C-L-D-X, as the code to be able to get yourself some extra entries into that raffle, and hopefully you can win that copy of Mystery Dungeon or uh, free DLC. Go ahead, do it. Have some fun. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today are old mechanics, and should they be brought back? Um, and so we're just going to be kind of going over some of our old mechanics uh, that we really enjoyed and things that we'd like to see come back. Maybe they shouldn't come back. Maybe the rose-tinted glasses are just way too way too large, and and we don't like it. Uh, so let, let's just jump into it. Um, I So for one, I'm very happy that... Well, I'm happy and not happy that... Apricorn crafting seems to be coming back. How are you not happy? <laughs> so so I'll explain. So so it's one of those things where like so apricorn balls are so cool because I was like obviously like everybody, I thought they had really cool designs back in Gen 2 mm-hmm. and like they showed them in the anime and like they were an official art and they looked really cool. And then they took them away for us in Gen 3 and disappointingly gave us Pokeballs that act almost exactly the same, but don't look nearly <laughs> as cool. Yeah. <laughs> which was very disappointing because it would have been just as easy to be like, hey, let's just put the level ball in the store instead of the nest ball, right? Like, that yeah. that would have been really cool and, and a very interesting way to handle that. But no, we got the nest ball instead and meh. But then, it, I mean, we waited literally, like, that was in 2000, 2001, like, was the last time we saw it. Then we got to see them come back during the remake in 2010. And then it's just impossible to get Kurtz balls until Gen 6 again, where you get one of each per game. <laughs> Yeah, and then you never use it. And then you never use it. You're always scared. I think people have rose-colored glasses, like I'm going to use that term right now, of just how frequently you get them in gold and silver, by the way. Because gold and silver was not heart gold, soul silver. I'm going to I'm gonna throw that out there. In heart gold, soul silver, it was one apricorn per day. Mm-hmm. In heart gold, soul silver, I believe they let you give him multiple apricorns of the same color per day. Yeah. And so it got boosted in Heart Gold and Silver, but in the original Gold and Silver, like they were still very rare Pokeballs. I mean, it, it was it was a daily. Like you went and talked to Kurt every day and gave him an Apricorn so you could collect yeah, those Pokeballs. Yeah, but you knew you could eventually get another one. Yeah, yeah. Whereas well, if I only ever have one, I will never use it. In Sword and Shield, you already have that capability. If I want to be very, uh, very crass. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so. You know you can guarantee yourself another one. That's that's a better answer, but it's uh yeah I, I do agree with that. The only thing is like it takes away at least for me like this is me being a uh, being just like a really old Pokemon fan because it's not the same like honestly like a kid who picked up Sword and Shield or picked up Sun and Moon as their first games and they're just like man I only get one of these Pokeballs and it looks really cool and they're right by the way they do look really cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those kids who uh, don't have that don't have that understanding, like this is really cool for them. They can get multiple of them. Um, for me, it's just like, man, you just made the thing that was cool and a callback that was rare not rare anymore. And so, like, that's like my bittersweet moment of it. It's just you don't like, know how rare they're gonna be in the DLC. Uh, that's true. I but my honest my honest assumption is because the Isle of Armor seems to be very heavily based on Japan and Japanese culture, kind of like mm-hmm. the Johto region. Mm-hmm. We're going to run into an NPC, and it's not going to be Kurt. It's going to be, like, Kurt's apprentice, former apprentice or something. Didn't and, we establish that that was Ball Guy? Uh, oh, my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> I, I was sitting right here with you a few weeks ago, and we established that Kurt's uh, nephew or grandson or whatever, his apprentice, is actually Ball Guy. Do not go back on that <laughs> yeah. lore thatch because I'm very attached to it. I'm a, I'm okay with it if Ball Guy beca- is just like crafting Pokeballs. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, but I, I imagine that's what it's going to be. It's going to just be a rehash of the Gen 2 slash Gen 4 mechanic, which is good and bad. I mean, if they're going to do it, I'd like to see it progress, right? I, I'd like to see it take a step for taking a step further. Like at minimum, what I would really like is for them to add like one color of Apricorn. 
Oh, you know what I mean? So yes, cool. please. I would love for them to be like, hey, here's a purple apricorn. And you can give that you can give that to ball guy and it turns into a new Pokeball of some sort. Oh, that would be so good. I think that's how you take it a step further. I don't have confidence that's going to happen. I have confidence that it's going to be exactly like the Gen 4 mechanic all over again. That's what I expect. That was okay, though. Yeah, I, I mean, it was okay. I would just... I, I, I mean, just... I don't like settling for it being the same. You know what I mean? I want I want to see the game get a little bit better. Like, people complain about, oh, well, you're buying a Pokemon game. It's the same each time. And the answer is not really. I can say every game had something that pushed something new. Um, and it was done mostly well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see, I see what you mean. With the exception of, like, Z-moves. And so, because people are just like, it's the same game. How many times do you catch the same Pikachu? I'm like, well, that's part of the fun of the game, is catching the same Pikachu, you know, seven times. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't have it in that game, okay? I have it in that game, but not that one. And so, but, like, the game's different in, in itself, because it has different culture, different, you know, different routes, different things that the Pokemon can do. And so, mm -hmm. I, I just think that, I don't want the same mechanics every time, right? I don't want the same, like, overworld game mechanics. I'd like to see it kind of evolve. And, I mean, maybe that's just, the like, the way this discussion gets framed at this point. is just, like, it's just like should it, should it come back or should it get better or should it stay the same? I mean... Sometimes, sometimes you get mechanics that maybe you don't want them to stay the exact same, but you want an equivalent, and instead yeah. they're lost. Like, I do not, like shiny hunting in generation eight because oh, pretty much awful. your only actual option is breeding mm -hmm. yeah. whereas ever since gen 4 with the pokey radar we've had what was essentially a mini game that you could use to shiny hunt and that you could get good at and increase your chances of getting a shiny i would i would this love that it's just back. a game of patience i don't like it i i think i would argue even sos battles were the same way in generation seven yeah. SOS battles were way worse than anything that had come before, like mm -hmm. Dexnav and Pokey Raider. Dexnav was peak. Dexnav was peak, in my opinion. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the Pokey Raider, actually, but uh, yeah, Dexnav was uh, probably objectively uh, the best one because the Pokey Radar could get very stressful. I think I, I think Pokey Radar is if you were a hardcore like shiny hunter like that was probably that could have been your favorite because it took the most skill and you felt accomplished. Not yeah. only that, but you could keep the chain going and catch multiple shinies if yes, you're good enough. That's true. Uh, I think you could do the same thing with Dexnav though. I don't think the I don't think the chain ends if you catch a shiny. Uh, Dexnav. The chain does end after like two fifty five. I think it resets because the counter is like yeah, a yeah. certain number of bits. So okay, that makes sense. But that's the same for uh, SOS. But I I thought Dexnav was great. I love Dexnav as a shiny hunting method. It was amazing. I I love that. And when they went to SOS battles, I'm like, what's the point of shiny hunting? I'm just sitting here <laughs> tapping attacks. Yeah. It it was absolutely the worst. I thought SOS battle SOS chains were the worst. I think Dexnav was peak. Radar isn't bad at all either. I think Radar was, um, it it. it the radar to Dexnav was the Pokemon that we're seeing now, where it's just like, let's make things easier. Mm. But I think when they went to SOS battles, they're just like, forget shiny hunting. We don't need to worry about that. I wonder how much they're upset just like shiny hunting streams. I, I really <laughs> wonder, because like, I can see them being like, you're really devaluing the value of what we want a shiny to be, right? I, I don't think they intend everybody. I don't think they intend for a shiny living Dex to be a thing that somebody has like ever. I, I think they want that to be. I think they want they want people to be like, I have three or four shinies. Yeah, but see, they did put shiny hunting mini games. Like the Pokey Radar was especially just for shiny hunting. Whereas That's not true. Dexnav, That's not true. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Po Pokey Radar. You're right. I I thought of Dexnav, and I don't know why. No, Dexnav had you know egg moves and IVs, but mm -hmm. the Pokey Radar was specifically just for shiny hunting. And so they, they know that there is, you know, a market for that, quote unquote, like mm -hmm. some people want that. And they kept putting in ways to do that. So they kept knowing that some people want that. And then they just messed it up a bit. And then they just gave up on it. And I don't know what that's about. Uh, are you talking about this gen or are you talking about gen 7 included? This gen. Like uh, and gen 7 gen is a mess up and this gen is... A giving up i mean if you want the real answer i think that there are a lot of things that weren't finished in sword and shield and okay, this was fair. one of the things that, <laughs> that it was just one of the things that saw the cutting room floor with shiny hunting 
I, I, I honestly think they go, okay, this is something that not everybody's going to miss. And you know what? You know what? All the people that are shiny hunting on Twitch are perfectly happy with their Masuda method nonsense. So, yeah. Yeah. Or, or they're going and they're KOing 500 Wulu. Like, their choice. So did, <laughs> did, like, the gridding system, because they got rid of that after, like, Gen 6, did that impa- do you think that impacted it? Because I, I didn't do a whole lot of shiny hunting. I did in Gen 6, but I didn't try in Gen 7 or 8. I think in Gen 7, you still could have handled a Poke, Poke nav type deal mm-hmm. without a problem. And I think that's really where it messed it up. I, I think they could have continued with Dex, Dex nav, but, I mean... It's uh, who who said it? It was Omori who said it in a recent interview. They want each game to have like its own thing. So you go, oh, that's the Pokemon with that thing. And I, I think we've just reached a point where like things no longer feel new. Like they're not innovating, mm-hmm. uh, quote unquote, uh, per se. Like this is just like I don't mean to be mean to Game Freak. I think the Pokemon's still a fun game, and I still really appreciate it. But in, in terms of these aspects, I, I think there's just like a lack of innovate. We're just getting to the point where um, it's not. The thing that they're replacing other things with isn't better. It's just equal, right? Yeah. If it's there at all. If it's there at all, right? So, like, I okay, because like, I, if we go back to shiny hunting and we say, yeah, Dex Nav was cool or Radar was cool, but then we got Dex Nav, which was a bit cooler, right? And there, it's just like cool. We progressed on that feature. That's a really cool way to do that. And I, I think we could say that just throughout like Pokemon, like core mechanics in general as well. We've seen that. And I think we can go, oh, Mega Evolution's really a really cool idea. And it's just like, oh, Z-moves are an idea. I'm just going to say an idea. I don't know if it was a good one. <laughs> and then we, and then it's just like, we're going to replace Mega Pokemon with Dynamax. And it's just like, but why? And, mm. and so like, it just got, it's getting to that point, I feel like, with a lot of features where it's just like, we can't think of anything better. And they've like boxed themselves in. Um, and I think mm. this, is, this is kind of what they've been trying to avoid by cutting things out from game to game. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see anyone protesting when the Pokerdor was brought back essentially the same in Gen 6, except for the fact that it was a bit harder to use with the way the Gen 6 3D yes. world looked. So I, I think it's okay bringing back the exact same thing. I, I don't think people will, will rebel against that because that's something they know and that's something they like. But I think when they take things away and then they replace it with something uh, quote unquote inferior, people will get upset. Oh, yeah. Of course. If I were to be completely honest, I feel like that's where they kind of messed up with Dynamax and Gigantamax. Like, it's a cool concept, but they could have just been Megas, right? Like, yeah. everybody's just like, why couldn't my Gigantamax Pokemon just be Megas? Like, you could have had... Because then you need to design a billion of them. Otherwise, you just get Gigantamax, which is restricted to a few Pokemon, and Dynamax instead. Like, you can Dynamax a Wool if you want to. So, so like, I understand the fun of it, like, in, in game, but, like... I think Gigantamax was handled super poorly, personally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still think it's handled per- super poorly because it, the fact that you couldn't make a Pokemon that you currently have become a G- Gigantamax was just, that was the worst thing they could have possibly done. Mm-mm-mm. I'm curious to see if they're going to retcon that a little bit with the DLC. They are. They said in the DLC they're going to retcon that. Okay. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I knew they were doing it with the starters. I wasn't sure how large they were spanning. They said, uh, I, they said some. The way they described it in the press release was that some guy is studying how to uh, make Pokemon that you have become the Gigantamax forms, and that's how they found out about the starters Gigantamax forms. Yeah, right. I think it has something to do with that mysterious big tree or something. Yeah, I don't know. so that's that's a whole well, that's thing. Good. That's a whole thing. I don't know. All right, uh, any mechanics that you particularly liked, uh, P. Mickey? So. Yeah, I mean, one thing I kind of like, and they've, they've moved away from really in this gen, was interesting, like, moving and traveling mechanics. Because um, I'm thinking, like, Gen 6, where you had the roller skates, and you could do the cool tricks on them, and that was kind of a neat movement mm. mechanic. And then I liked that you had the Latios, Latios flying mechanic in Auras. Oh, that was the best. Even in Gen 7, you had, uh, you know, you had your different ways of traveling on Pokemon. I think it was a very flawed system with, like, the whole Tauros riding system and some of the Pokemon you used to surf with and things like that, but I liked it because now it's just a bike. I don't need a helmet. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Because like now it's just a bike and then it's a cut screen when you take the Corviknight taxi. Oh man, so- if it wasn't a cut screen, if they could do literally anything but just a cut screen, I feel like it would have been great. I yeah. would have I would have loved anything but that cut screen for the Corviknight taxi. Yeah. It's just, it's bland. I mean, I like that it's very fluid or f- now where you can just like bike straight into the water and you go immediately into your, like your little bike boat thing. And that's nice. But I'm also 
like the outfit, first of all, is awful. I mean, that's disappointing. They oh. didn't fix that at all from Gen 7. But <laughs> yeah. it's just, it's bland. Um, and especially because you're spending so much of your time on a bike in the wild area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's all you have. You spend all that time and in game money looking really, 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 really good. And then, like, the part of the game where you sp- you're going to spend, like, 99% of your post-game, you're mm-hmm. forced to wear that awful bike-riding uniform. You know, it wouldn't even be bad if they would just let you customize it, actually, instead of, like, oh, you can change the color of it a little bit. Um, if they actually, <laughs> if they actually let you ch- customize it. I mean, granted, this is, like, the definition of the pro- progress I was expecting, because... Last gen, we had zero customization of the Poke Ride like outfit yeah. whatsoever. Now at least we're getting like, here's 18 color palettes, and we can choose from that, which I I guess is progress. But I'd love to be able to be like, okay, when I go into the store, I want to be able to pick my trainer outfit, but I also want to be able to swap to a second palette where I can put you know my my bike. My bike outfit because they like, could have just let you put on like the um, gym type uniforms that you yeah. buy when you ride your bike. There's you know. there's th- solve the problem right there, but yeah. I I think they really messed up there in that. I mean this is that's a very minor nitpick. I feel. I mean I I realize that they're just simplifying the model that you use when you ride on the bike. No, what they're doing with the with the bike is I think they're I think I honestly think because they see it as a quote unquote children's game. They're trying to promote safety on, like, bicycles. Yeah. I mean, you could have had, like, a whole... There could be cooler outfits. I mean, like, you could even be, like, riding, like, a Galarian Rapidash in, like, an equestrian outfit. Like, that'd be fine. That would be so much better. you just in that same outfit, and so all the money you spend looking cool is wasted, except unless you go online and do battles. You know, especially after we had just had Let's Go, where they're just like, here, we made Pokemon models that you can ride on. Yes, I think that's the thing too. Is that they didn't even get rid of that with that. Like you, they had following Pokemon and writable Pokemon in that game. Mm. I, I only care about following Pokemon. I I am like I am apparently in the minority <laughs> of Pokemon fans that has not not had a giant outcry for bringing back bringing Pokemon in that can uh, can follow you because I don't care. I just don't <laughs> care. I, I couldn't I couldn't care less. And. And everybody's like, man, why didn't they put this feature in? And it's just like, I don't know, probably because most people don't care. What do you mean you don't care? Um, it's the best mechanic that ever existed. And I like, mean, sure. I was I was okay with not having it. And then yeah. I played Let's Go and I had a Mew following me around and I felt really, 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 really cool. So yeah. I, I guess I can see... I can see where the appeal is. I can see the appeal, but at the same time, it's not like on my top list of things that I care about. Right? Fair like, like I, it's just not on my list of things. Like, oh, Thatch, Thatch wants this. It, it's more of like, uh, if they put it in there, I'm not going to be upset, and I understand that somebody's going to be happy about it. Kind of like how I felt that all the Pokemon should be in the game, and then people still <laughs> people yelled at me like, "Why would you need that?" Blah blah blah. I don't know. You're the same guy yelling at me that she want Pokemon to follow you. Okay. Have I ever have I ever told you my theory of why Whimsicott's model looks slightly different in this gen? Uh, no. Like it's got that weird bump on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I aren't, like my theory is honestly that one of the reasons Whimsicott is in the game is because the way the model got messed up at the beginning where they had that issue mm-hmm. was was that little bump in the back and it w- they were like but it looks good enough. <laughs> I I I really I I wonder if they had issues with the models but that's that's a story for another day. Yeah, definitely. I I do I do wonder if they had that issue but I, I'm just using that as an alliteration for like it's one of those things that I don't need, but I can understand why people other people need and, and would want. Um, I'm not yeah. gonna I'm not gonna try to rain on somebody else's parade because it's some, it's something that Thatch doesn't think is necessary. <laughs> Following Pokemon was was interesting. I mean, it was I think it was handled. I don't know. There, there's definitely something that happened between the transition of like going from 2D sprites to going to 3D. Oh yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if I if I'm going to be completely if I want to be completely honest, I don't know that I need the jump to 3D in Pokemon whatsoever. I think it was I I don't know. I feel like to a, like a little bit that the jump like it was cool and it was novel when it happened in Gen 6 and in Gen 7 the novelty at least for me wore off. But they kind of they kind of broke that seal and now they're kind of stuck. See, you said before 
no, Pokemon is not the same exact game every single time. But yeah. I'm a person who spent most of her time playing Pokemon Sword going, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this game is Pokemon and it looks so cool. Trees accepted. But um, <laughs> I think they left that texture in there on purpose. I think they probably did it on yes. purpose. Honestly, yes. Um, but then today I was grinding up my Weedle on Route 1 in Pokemon Red in my virtual console, all in black and white. I'm 16 pixels tall. Yep. And I'm like, this feels exactly the same. I don't like whenever yeah. I go, I can go from like a home oh, yeah, yeah. console Pokemon game that's partly open world mm -hmm. to being 16 pixels tall in black and white with sprites that barely resemble the Pokemon they're supposed to represent, and I'm just as happy. I, I think there's... I, I, I don't know. It's probably just me based on, like, which one I've been playing more than the other, because I, I do remember going through Sword and Shield and being like, man, some of these models look really good. Because yeah. I, I, I think the jump to HD helped out some of the models, um, particularly, like, the ones that I'll, I'll think of and I'll always reference for this are the Slosis line. I think those really benefited to the jump to HD. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, I, I've been playing Leaf Green recently, and I go, man, that sprite looks pretty fresh. And <laughs> but I think it's the I I I I think part of that's just been that I've been like, oh yeah, I've been playing uh, I've been playing Sword and Shield for so long. You know, it's cool to see the Pokemon in this pixelated form again. Um, and I, I do agree with you. I, I think I think Pokemon Pokemon especially I think is including. The, I think this is partially because I, I don't know if it's because I'm just a. I'm a person that doesn't care about graphics and like there's been this renaissance and like pixelated artwork for games as mm. of late. And like, it, it's just like, it's cool to be retro quote unquote. And I'm, I'm, I'm into that scene. And so I go, cool pixels. I'm into it. And I don't mind if I can see the pixels for my Pokemon. I don't mind in Pokemon, but you know, maybe in other things I might care. I, that's probably true. See, I keep looking at Octopuck Traveler mm. and I keep going, you know, if it looked like a modern game, I would buy it in a heartbeat, even though mm. I'm told the story is not in that incredibly amazing. It's not. But the retro look is the one thing that is really stopping me from giving it a try. I'm so, into retro looks. Mm. I think the art for Octopath Traveler is amazing. I think it's hands down amazing. I don't amazing. like it. I, I don't like retro games, but when I play Gen 1 Pokemon... I'm perfectly happy to immerse myself into the world of Pokemon, even mm -hmm. in like three pixel by two and black and white. <laughs> it just sense. works for Pokemon specifically for me. Makes sense. I mean, I think there's like a nostalgia thing to it. Like that's what I had growing up was the graphics of gold and silver. And then so it's fun to revisit that and remember it being cool at the time. And then it's cool to see how it's progressed over the years. Because I always like those videos when they show how something's progressed over time, especially like Pokemon where you go from like Gen 1 to Gen 8. Mm -hmm. and all the models that all change. I mean, I have always enjoyed that. So, like, I like going back to, like, the old school art styles and playing some of the older games. But I also, I like that we keep upgrading. I don't know. I like that it keeps growing and changing. I don't know that we're going to be able to feel that kind of level for much longer. Like, I No, I, I think Gen 6 was the big one. And I don't think it's ever going to be I be, like, Because I think there are some changes between the models, or at least the textures, mm -hmm. from, from Gen 7 to Gen 8. But... I know for a fact from Gen 6 to Gen 7, all of the models are exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, they are. I think I think the only thing that will ever feel as wow as Gen 6 in the next like 20 years is when they bring Pokemon to VR, if they ever do. I Yeah. So I'm just I I can't get behind VR right now. I just can't as like this, this is like this isn't even a Pokemon thing. I just can't get behind VR right now. Because I don't think you can do it well for a consumer level price. Like, oh no, not yet. By far, we all bought switches for three hundred dollars, and I think having a switch for three hundred dollars is completely different. Because I mean, let's go talk to Seth and ask him how much he spent on his VR set setup. It's hmm. it's it's not three hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you that much because he spent probably four hundred dollars minimum on the headset. Plus, he has to have a, a graphics card that can support the dual outputs and, and all this other stuff. So, I mean, I thought about getting into VR, but I'm like, it's just the entry level fee is just absurd. And people are just like, well, there's cheaper options out there. I'm like, yeah, but do you want the cheaper option for Pokemon? And yeah, I mean, I think I think it's just like 
It might be one of those things that like exists for a while and fades away because it never managed to, you know, get down to a level where it could actually break into the market in a significant way. It's it's or more... it might be something we come back to someday. I am no expert. So but... it, I the way I feel about VR is VR tried to become a thing too soon. Right. Maybe, I, yeah. I think it's one of those things where like if it tries to come out too soon and be a thing too early on in its life cycle. It just gets murdered by the like uh, the example of this I'm thinking is the retro is the uh, the not the retro the virtual boy. Mm. Nintendo's like we want 3D to be a thing, and so then and so they pushed the retro, the the virtual boy out, which was because they were trying to make it affordable. It ended up cutting corners where you only had one color. It, it just didn't look very good. And then we get the 3DS, which is essentially the same thing, no glasses 3D, which is what they're trying to do with the virtual boy, and. That did incredibly well, not because of the 3D feature, I will admit. No, I don't think so. But it did incredibly well. Um, The 3D feature was a gimmick for some people. I thought, honestly, uh, OG 3DS isn't where it's at. New 3DS is where it's at. Mm -mm. Because you can actually have the 3D on in the new 3DS and not... Without dying, yes. Yeah, without dying. (laughs) So it was done very well, though, in in that regard. So, yeah, I I appreciate that. We'll, We'll see how it goes. We'll, see, we'll really see how it goes. We will, but I'm I'm putting it down on paper right now. If within my lifetime I never get VR Pokemon, I am going to be a bit disappointed. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know if that's the way they're planning on going yet, but we'll we'll see. Nintendo probably, probably isn't the one that's going to do that. But yeah, a girl can dream. Yep. On that note, though, let's let's end it here, and we're gonna take a short break. Probably yell at you about some ramen. And then we'll come right back at you with the Pokemon of the episode. So we will catch you on the flip-flop. Hey guys, Seth Philo cutting in to tell you about something awesome that I've been absolutely loving. Vite Ramen. If you guys know me, you know I have a borderline noodle addiction, and part of that love has always been a guilty pleasure for ramen. Well, Vite Ramen is ramen, but get this, it's actually good for you. You heard me right. The guys at Vite Ramen have spent years making ramen that's nutritionally complete, and I absolutely adore it. Each bowl has 30 grams of protein, which is more than your average protein shake, 7 grams of fiber, all 27 key vitamins and minerals that you need, and most importantly, tons of awesome flavor. Oh yeah, and did I mention it still only takes 4 minutes to prepare? It's basically still instant ramen. You can head over to VitRamen.com and pick up soy sauce chicken, garlic pork, and my favorite, vegan miso flavors, as well as handy utensils and other such stuff. And here is the coolest part. At checkout, enter code PUCKLE and you'll get 10% off your entire order. That's P-U-C-L, all caps, for a whopping 10% off. Anyway, I gotta get back to rating, and you've got a show to finish. Catch you guys on the flip-flop. And welcome back to the Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 849, Toxtricity, the punk Pokemon. Uh, When this Pokemon sounds as if it's strumming a guitar, it's actually clawing at the protrusions on its chest to generate electricity. That's really gross. Yeah. But it looks so cool when it does it. Yeah. I think I'd like the low-key form better as like a partner Pokemon. Mm. He seems much more friendly. Uh, I mean, bass players are usually cooler than guitar players, <laughs> but... That's probably true. is uh, pretty cool, though. I mean, bass 502 total. 114 special attack, 75 speed. Those are the important numbers. Uh, and he also actually yeah. has a ba- decent physical attack, too, at 98. Like, it's not bad. Yeah, there's there's been some um, shift gear sets. That's the reason, yeah. like, uh, punk or whatever, the uh, amped form is more common because he yeah. can shift gear, but... Mm-hmm. Yep. Nonetheless, and, we're running a um, a low key form because, because we don't really care about that. We don't care. Move. Yeah. Um, so, what's fun about Toxicity in BSS because this is a BSS team is that he does very well against a lot of the very common leads, specifically the ghost types like Mimikyu and Hydreigon, uh, because he has the fun attack Nuzzle, which is finally given to non Pika clones this generation. <laughs> Um, so he's he's running that, which does great because he's using an assault vest, so he has some decent bulk to him against Pokemon like Spec Dracapult, and he can nuzzle them to basically shut them down for the game. And then he's running Hex 
because what better way to punish an already paralyzed Pokemon than hitting him for a 130 attack? And yeah. then um, he's using his Punk Rock ability to take advantage of Overdrive and Boom Burst. So he can do a lot of damage and he can shut down a lot of common leads and common sweeps. Pokemon like Togekiss or Corviknight aren't having a lot of fun against Toxicity. So he can really do a good job of coming in early game and paralyzing their leads or coming in late game and preventing a sweep. Or even just that wonderful, annoying Whimsicott we were talking about a while back. <laughs> <laughs> Whimsicott, Whimsicott is pretty rough, actually, this gen. Uh, at least yeah, in battle spot singles. Like a, yeah. You, you need like an infiltrator or a sound move, just, just in case one shows up. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, that thing can just stall you out and it's infuriating. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> Hi, I'm annoying. <laughs> and then as one of our win conditions on this team, we've got a Gyarados holding a Lumberry so that he can protect himself from uh, things like Rock Tomb or, um, is that, maybe not Rock Tomb, but protect himself from some status moves that a Will-O-Whisper might be trying to throw out or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, he's running Waterfall and Bounce as traditional attack moves to take advantage of Dynamax, Geyser, and Dynamax um, uh, Airstream. And then he's got Dragon Dance in case he's allowed to set up a little bit. And then something that does help him a lot against some of the hazers and such against him. He's got Taunt so that he can stop um, Pokemon like, uh, oh God. You can stop Corsola too, yeah. Yeah, Toxapex too. Corsola, Toxapex, Gastrodon, some of the ones that can maybe stand him a little better. He can shut them down with Taunt so that they can't recover. They can't Baneful Bunker. They can't Clear Smog or Haze. Um, mm -hmm. So he can kind of do what he wants. So it's a pretty fun Gyarados. He's pretty effective. I mean, Gyarados is just really good in BSS, so it's really hard to not have a good one if you have him on your team. Yeah, he's good with Intimidate. He's good with Moxie. He's just good in general. Yeah. yeah. So those are those two. Uh, so uh, because we were just like, man, this team can't be any any more OU. Uh, well, I guess not OU is the word, but like more meta. Uh, Dragapult's mm. on the team because it's meta. Uh be uh, Gyarados, and Gyarados and Dragapult, they just scare me. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, they're both very good. Um, and I like I, I like not use, using them so I don't feel dirty. But uh, I'm going to have to try this team out because it, it, to the Toxtricity alone is fun. Uh, but it's running Dragon Darts, Phantom Force, Acrobatics, f probably for the uh, for Max Airstream still again. Yeah. For, for whatever oh, yeah. reason, because it's a Dragapult, so why not go fast? Uh, and Fire Blast with the Weakness Policy. Um, just so it can be even better. I mean, it's Dragapult. I mean, it's going to hit you hard and it's going to be scurry. Um, it's going to be real. Sc oh, actually, this one's running physical because, and then fire blast for coverage. Uh, mostly mm -hmm. for Toxapex, for, for them Ferrothorns. Not Toxapex, Ferrothorn. I mean, they're the same <laughs> Pokemon, just different types. Um, and then we've got, uh, we're just like, man, do you want more wind conditions? I heard you like wind conditions in your wind conditions. So we have, uh, <laughs> we, we have a Corviknight, um, with body press. Iron Defense, Brave Bird, and Roost. So this is pretty standard Corviknight uh, with leftovers. Body Press is such a nice move, though. I love that move this oh, gen. I love it. That's my favorite new move this gen, is Body Press. It's it, so smart. Yeah, it's such a cool move. It's such a good idea. It, it gives it gives options to defensive Pokemon to not be bad. Um, yeah. And like, Mudsdale is usable now. Yeah. With its ability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's really nice to have. I, I'm a big fan of uh, Body Press. So good on you, Corviknight, being a Corviknight and stuff. <laughs> and I guess I guess I'm taking us home with a couple of classic Gen 5 boys. The first one is another of the rulers of what would be OU if BSS had an OU Excadrill. It's Mold Breaker because you want to make Rotom's life a living hell. It's Focus Sash. It's got Earthquake, Iron Hat, Rock Tomb, and Swords Dance, and this is not a Sandrush Excadrill that sets its own sand. This is just one of the worst things you can find yourself facing <laughs> in a PSS battle. It's it's a lot of speed control, this team. I like it. Yeah, it's wonderful. And then, uh, speaking of speed control, we got Scarf High Dragon. Oh, by the way, the Excadrill is, has a full sash. Have I mentioned that? I think I have. Yes. Um, then we got Scarf High Dragon, because who's afraid of fairies? Not me. Uh, it's got a very classic Dark Pulse, Drake Meteor, Far Blast, and Flash Cannon. And it's just a High Dragon. It does what a High Dragon does. Ooh. I I'm a fan. Me too. I really yeah. think I'm going to try it out. 
Yeah, you know, I'm a, like, like we were talking about it beforehand, and I'm, I really want to try it. Literally, just because of the toxicity, if nothing else. Mm. I've seen it a couple times, and I've never done well against that toxicity. Yeah, it's just so effective. It nuzzles and it, it yeah, and it, 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 it handles it handles a couple of like really big threats very well. Uh-huh. I, I mean, it, it really does, and so I think that's I, I think this team is very interesting and very well put together. So this will this will of course be on the uh, be on our on our what is whatever it's called. Discord, um, Discord, for the people to look at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we'll have another team next week. If you want something, maybe if you want us to cover a Pokemon in specific, like send us over. Or if you have a team that you think is good, send it over, and we we might go over it, and we'll give you a shout out. Uh, so thanks for that, guys. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and kick it on over to the mailbag. It's mail time. Yeah. Send in your email. And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag, as always, is brought to you by the energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. 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 And I guess because of popular demand, we'll bring back the Green Tauros badge because people have actually asked. I didn't think anybody cared, so that's why I got rid of it. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I don't know what the mailbag question was last week. Probably if you're enjoying home. Yeah. Yep, it was. Perfect. I'm really good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, so we're going to go ahead and read your listener emails. This is the part of the show where you can send in the listener emails to pucklepodcast at gmail.com and we'll probably read it. Um, so please do send them in. We really appreciate just hearing from you guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So our first email is going to be from Trainer Sleeves. And I've got this one. Hello, Puckle Crew. It's your girl, Trainers Leaves, back at it again. Hello, Thatch and wonderful co-hosts. I'm here to talk about my thoughts on Pokemon Home, as discussed in the previous episode. I, personally, did not get home. It's not that I didn't like the concept, because I do, and I don't have many negative feelings towards it. It's just because I don't need to transfer anything myself. However, I have seen enough posts on Amino about it as well as, other dis- as, a- as well as others discussing how they feel about it, such as right here on the podcast, that I formulated my own opinion about it. Design-wise, I think that home is beautiful and pleasing to look at. It feels, well, homey. I'm sure the Pokemon there like it too. Oh, that's such a sweet thought. <laughs> 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 and systematically, it seems to be pretty smooth to, um, well... Womp, well. womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> she said she hadn't downloaded it, so... <laughs> exactly. Uh, except, of course, for fresh, for trash trades on the GTS. But those have always existed, so whatever. Uh, yeah, no, it's not, it's not smooth. It's, it's, a, it's a trash fire, but... The website was smooth. Yeah, um, I suppose. <laughs> I, heard, I heard the Switch app is pretty nice, but the problem is you can't really do anything on the Switch app. Exactly. And when you're on mobile and you try to do stuff and then it just takes hours to do anything and room trades just don't work Mm -hmm. 99% of the time. It's just a mess. Anyway, um, from a perspective of someone who has no personal experience with home, my one problem with it is the bug with hybrid training previously discussed. They need to get that fixed as soon as possible because it's such a rude awakening to those who don't know about this and it just isn't fair. Well, they're going to fix it soon. So there's it. Yes. Anyway, that's enough for me. Thanks for reading and catch you guys on the flip flop trainer sleeves. This is an interesting perspective that I always forget exists is the person that doesn't transfer because there's a lot more of them now than there used to be. Because I remember yeah. I remember in Gen 6, like we were all waiting for it. Like banks happening. We need bank. Yeah. But this time with Sword and Shield, like there's definitely a different dynamic of people who have like come back to the franchise or this is their first game in the franchise. And they're really playing it. And I, I want to know, I wanna, I'm curious to see how much of that is like the Pokemon Go effect. I don't know if that it's Pokemon Go per se, or if it's just like Pokemon is having a quote unquote renaissance. Because uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, um, if people haven't heard already, are probably going to be some of the best selling Pokemon games since like Ruby and Sapphire, or maybe even yeah. Silver. And they'll probably surpass, yeah, they'll probably surpass everything but the original two generation. Mm-hmm. They probably won't surpass Gold and Silver, but it's going to be like the third best selling generation, which is saying a lot. Because Poke- like the- Pokemon's been like in a steady like 16 million per game, and they've already hit it, Mm-mm. which is nuts to me. And-, and I think it's just because more people are on it. I think probably because honestly, it's a home console as well. Yeah, I- 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 as opposed to a handheld console. I think a lot. Of- I think some people who who played video games still didn't buy a handheld because they felt like it was too kiddie. Mm. 
because Nintendo's always been the king of that, right? And so Nintendo always has that vision. But like the Switch, everybody has a Switch now um, because it's selling like hotcakes. Mm-mm. And I have more than two in my household. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and and so I mean, people buy them. It's a fun console. It, it's it, it's I really enjoy it. I want to know what what's really getting people like to come back to Pokemon. Because I really feel like that's what it is. Like, is there people that know of Pokemon and they're like coming back to it, but they don't want to transfer anything, which is fine. Especially if the last game was gold and silver, because who cares? You're not going to do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not transferring anything either, but that's because I'm terrible at transferring. Like, I didn't <laughs> put anything in bank. I didn't put anything in bank. I put some stuff in from Let's Go, and those are mostly shinies I got on Go that I just wanted to get all the way over. So when I did the transfer for Gen 6, I think I transferred enough to finish my... I f- transferred all my legendaries and mythicals, and I transferred my mm-hmm. it, like enough stuff to help me finish the decks in X and Y. And then I think that was about where my transferring stopped. I don't like people... people like It, it makes me feel like a, I'm an awful per- person for saying, like, I want to be able to transfer all my Pokemon or something. But, I mean, it, part of me is just, like, having the ability to be able to do it. Like you were saying with the Pokeballs, like, I want to be able to do it. Yeah. Now that I can get more. Yeah. And so, like, I want to know that I can go back. Like, I think it's really cool that I can go play Ruby and Sapphire that came out in 2003, and I can bring those Pokemon right now all the way up to home. I think that is yeah. the that's coolest. I think that's the coolest thing in the entire world. And I'm not the only one. The Pokemon company also thinks it's the coolest thing because they actually put out a series of videos um, last year in Japan about this. It was called, like, the Pokemon Rescue Squad or something like that. Oh. It was like the greatest video of all time where like somebody like somebody like found like a sapphire cartridge under a couch or something and like this group of people run in and like grab it and like dust it off and like insert it into a slot and then you watch them do every single transfer from from the gen 3 to gen 4 the gen 4 to gen 5 and then the gen 5 to gen 6 and gen 6 to gen 7 transfer How have oh, I geez. not seen this Nobody saw it because it was only in Japan I mean the super cool commercial with the kid and no, that's know, not the, that's different. The meteor that came over later, but I saw it when it was just in Japan. That was different though because it did get localized, and this was just something that was just never going to get localized. Yeah, this was just, well because it like came out like just randomly. It was just just mm. randomly came out in like 2018. Oh, so and, it wasn't part of you know the promotion of a yeah, new game. It wasn't a per- okay. part of a pro- promotion. It was just something they made. It was it was literally the silliest thing I'd ever seen though. Because like they they were all about it. They're like that because uh, the reason I found it was because like during like the like the bad part of Dexit, it was just one of those things that like somebody found and like was just like yeah they were promoting this just like a year ago. What's up with that? Oh, and now you can't do that, right? Uh, granted, I think like DLC puts a lot of things in more perspective, obviously, about what they're doing. I think if if we want to just to just to close off that comment i think they just ho- handled everything horribly in 2019 in 2019 <laughs> I, th- I think tpci's hr not hr but pr was a- absolute garbage in 2019 and i tried giving them the benefit of the doubt and it just it didn't pan out like i was yeah. trying to hope there was some big plan in play and nothing about 2020 has said that what they were doing in 2019 was yeah right <laughs> like i want to i want to say like yeah they've been planning this from the beginning but i don't know i really don't know these are two very different years going on right now. It seems like a completely different company. Like, I, I just don't yeah. know. But yeah, thank you for that email, Lily. You inspired a lot of conver- uh, conversation about nothing that you were talking about. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go, we're going to go and we're going to, we're going to read N's email today. Hello, Thatch and lovely co-hosts. N Harmonia is writing in once again, this time featuring my thoughts on Pokemon Home. I was surprised as the rest of Puckle when Pokemon Home was released without warning, but I was completely on board with it. I was looking forward to freeing up my bank a little bit, filling out my decks a bit more, and getting my Reshiram, named Truffle, oh, into that my is coffee so perfect. of shield. <laughs> but mostly I was excited to be trading with some of my Puckle friends, which is why I paid for the yearly subscription up front and without any research whatsoever. And then, <laughs> and then I found out <laughs> that if I wanted to trade with my friend, I would physically have to be near them. Or that I would have to mail my phone to where they're located. <laughs> Considering yep. I don't have money for either postage or air travel, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> it's fine, though. I've been having a lot of fun with the Wonder Box, even though I did, uh, it did end up exchanging a somewhat rare Mon for a level 6 Metapod. I also enjoy the Your Room feature, because whenever I open the app, I get greeted by an adorable little Venipede. 
Soon, my baby, soon, I whispered to him tenderly, as I dream of a day when I'll be able to play with him in a Pokemon game. <laughs> anyway, enough rambling from me. I got to get back to raiding, and you got a show to finish. Cheers, and Harmonia, and Truffle. Oh, man, I love Anne so much. <laughs> I do love that, like, Pokemon Home tried to do everything that pokemon sword and shield couldn't do like exactly they're just like exactly like if you can do this with sword and shield you can't do it with you can't do it with home and, and yeah. I, think, I, I think the biggest thing is the trading online because sword and shield you can trade online with your friends so that's we're gonna yep. leave that there you can't gts though we're gonna put gts over here it, it's a weird division of labor mm. yes i understand it for the gts because i feel like every gen they had to rebuild the gts and they were tired of that <laughs> and I, I think they'd much rather just constantly update the GTS. But when it comes to like trading with friends, I think they should allow you to trade with friends over over long distances. I really think they should. I think the yes. biggest thing is they were so vague about that during the whole promotion. Never once was it mentioned that it was localized that we all just assumed you make a friend, you can like send a trade like you do in like Pokemon Go or whatever. Or, or well, Pokemon or Pokemon Go actually, you have to be next to the friend too. No, yeah. I, I realize that now, but like it was like it seems something as simple as that. You send a you send a trade request that you can see you have an active trade request of somebody, you accept yep. it and you're good to go. Because I yep. mean Sword and Shield's kinda messy where you have to do the whole I mean their whole online system's kinda messy, but it's I was disappointed than, to find out. It's so much better than Festival Plaza. I'm not mad. <laughs> okay. Like the fact that I can find somebody I'm trying to connect to in Sword and Shield is it's just the world, okay? <laughs> okay. So so in Festival Plaza, I was able to invite my friend to a trade or a battle, though. And uh, here, it's just... In home? I'm not saying home can do anything that Festival Plaza can. No, I'm saying... no. I'm saying, it, like, in Sword and Shield now, if I want to trade with a friend, I have to go through that stupid code thing. Yes, and it, it drives true. me insane. Yep. And same if I want to battle with someone. It's just, what? I still think it is a better system, personally. I it's it's not I don't know how they took the perfect system, which is known as the PSS, and then just dropped it. Like yeah. th today we're talking about mechanics that we want back. Like PSS, please. Oh, top that of the was list. A great system. PSS, there is nothing wrong with that. There there is nothing wrong with the PSS. I don't know why it's gone. I want it back. I will do anything to get it back. Please bring it back. I don't know. Because I really don't know. They're kind of like halfway there with the way they're handling like the stamps. It, it's like halfway there because you can filter that out so it's only friends who are currently online. But I would really like to be able to just to be like, oh, this friend's online. Tap the face. Let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I really would like that. And I, maybe that's something that they can do in Gen 9. Who knows? Because Gen 9 is probably going to be on the Switch because the Switch is going to be mm. around forever. Yeah. Yeah. The, the switch the switch isn't going to go anywhere until like twenty twenty five probably twenty twenty four. We've done but we've done two generations per console since the DS, so I'm expecting as much again. The only thing I'm expecting to be different from now on with Pokemon is that it's going to be instead of several games per generation, just one game per generation. Yeah, that's what I fully expect from a Pokemon from Pokemon now. You're going to get three years of the same game, and it's just going to be updated with DLC, and then maybe you get a Let's Go game. I hope not, but. I can do without Let's Go because yeah, I don't think you can do a, a not Gen 1 Let's Go. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I don't think you can do a not Gen because you have to start that adding in That was pure mechanics. nostalgia. That was pure Papa Nintendo needs his money now. <laughs> Give us a game. And they said, okay, Papa Nintendo, here you go. And then they said, yeah, it's totally a mainline Pokemon game. Wink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that way people would actually buy it. Yeah, it's, not, it's such much. an anomaly that they don't know how to handle. It's such an anomaly. Yeah, total wild card. Looking at you, Meltan. Homeless Meltan. Homeless, Homeless Meltan. Meltan. Yeah. So, twenty twenty Green Taurus badge to N. Any takers? Actually, I I want sleeves. But Ooh. if you want to outvote me, that's fine. McGee, it's on you. We can flip a coin. I'll flip oh. a coin. <laughs> Do you have a coin? I don't have a coin handy. I have a card. I have a business card. I'm going to flip it. I have a sack of Joia dollar. There I don't we know go. Why. There is a tails. Yes, that's how it works. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know whose heads and whose is tails. So. Uh, heads and harmonia tail sleeves. Yeah. Uh, it's tails. 
So it's sleeves. Sleeves gets it. Yay. Congratulations, sleeves. Yay. It's a, it's a little eagle thing on the back of the second year. We a dollar. Why do I have this? Okay, but yeah. So go. We'll give you the roll there on the on the Discord server, sleeves. If we don't, please remind us. No, and, I'll do it in just a minute. But thank you to everybody for coming in and listening to the show today. Uh, if you want to email us next week at pucklepodcast at gmail.com, please let us know what features you would like to see come back or maybe changed in some way when they come back. Uh, send that into pucklepodcast at gmail.com. We would also like to have you come over to our social media because, like, like I said, we're doing a giveaway later this week, so you got to keep an eye out on social media, and you can win maybe a copy of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX or the DLC for Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor. So we we really like to see you guys out there. This is these, they're all going to be digital, by the way. I want to make that clear. That just done with the post office. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. But also, so follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, what's the other one we use sometimes? Instagram. We use all of those. We really appreciate it. Also, come to the Discord and hang out with us. It'll be a lot of fun. Yes, please. Uh, we're going to definitely post the giveaway on Discord as well. So come to Discord, hang out with us. Uh, that's always in the show notes down below. You can also go ahead and uh, uh, what, what's the other thing that we do? Um, you can you can come and watch us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast if you want some more goodies in the middle of your week. Uh, we also have another show coming out on Thursday on our Puckle Plus feed, which is Battlecast. You can go and check that out. Our YouTube is coming back one day. Um, we're getting very close. I, I'm just, I, I got a lot of setbacks in the past couple of weeks, uh, but I'm, I'm back on the ball making progress. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead. And if you want to support the show financially, there's a couple of ways you can go ahead and do that. One, you can go to twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast and drop us a Twitch Prime subscription. We really appreciate that. That's free to you if you have a, uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, we always appreciate that. You can also go ahead and uh, go to our T Public store and get cool merch over there anything you buy over there helps support the show you can also go and buy ramen and it's yummy ramen you go and you buy your ramen bring it back eat it nom 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 and puckle gets a kit back from vite ramen and you don't feel horrible about yourself because you just got 25 percent of all your daily vitamins and nutrients that that's a sales pitch right there if i ever <laughs> saw one it does not taste as salty it is much better in that regard like i do not feel gross after eating it i i now feel gross if i eat like the 25 cent bags of ramen I wish I, I could have white ramen. You can when you come out here one day. Yeah. When we see each other, we'll have some. And you'll be like, that was good. And then mm -hmm. that, that's how you'll feel. And then Seth will be like, but it was amazing, right? And we'll all be like, <laughs> we'll all be like, well, I probably would rather go to a ramen place. But yes. I might, I might say it's amazing. I, I'm usually a fan of like pre-made food. That's true. That's true. Um, and then if you want to uh, go ahead and... Uh, support the show more directly and maybe get some cool shiny Pokemon out of it. You can go over to patreon.com slash puckle podcast. We're going to be going ahead and having uh, our, we have two more giveaways this month and then we're, next month we're giving away shiny fossils. Uh, and we're waiting to see what Pokemon day brings before we announce, uh, announce what our giveaways are in April. So with that said, I've been trainer thatch. I have been the fluffiest whimsy goat. And I have been P McGee. And here in the lavender town radio tower, it's closing time.
So I am back from the dead. Uh, full transparency to you guys, I, I really do thank both Jushiro and Whimsicott for leading the show these past few weeks, as well as Basket Sublime, Scrawn, and oh my gosh, the name is Slip- Sigma from picking up the slack while I was gone. Uh, I had a death in the family, and unfortunately that, that took a lot of time out of me this past week, so uh, thank you to them for doing it. And also thanks to our patrons who are making this place awesome to be at, awesome to do work for. And we can also just do a lot of really cool things for the community coming up. So let's get to it. Thanks to Greg, Dooley, Viger, Lane, Sensual, uh, Sean, the Fluffiest Whimsy Cot, Miguel, Paul, Marcus, John Roberts, Michael, Ryan, Dexio, Rotted Mushroom, Christian, Kinkovic, Bodtech, Wade, Tank, Swampertetta, Apollo, JT, Titan Killer, N, Michael, Corey, Big Chunk, Sheldon, Piccolo, Snickle, Cordia, Jesse, Ed, Dominic, Brock, Not Chris, Jonathan equals Dylan, Alec, Chris, Wuzzy, Wat, Matt, Matt, again, uh, Gigantamax Metapod, MC McKnight Rider, uh, Lord Corbinick, Howl, Guy Leech, Chief Spooky, and Graham, Oaks Joke, Mega Kazuki, Melvin, Andrew, John, Hepa, Ryan, Kevin, Galactic Trash Queen, <laughs> Yegler, Shining Umbreon, Captain Keldeo, Catherine, Stephen, Matthew, Trevor, Aaron, Joshua, Shambles, Greg, TJ, Trevor, Mikey, Doc Knox, The British Gent, Echo, Louise, Dennis, Taylor, Dark Flame 3, Tim, Bob, David, Old Man, Tup, Maxi, Disco, Calypso, Justin, P. McGee, Zane, South, Justin, Sammy, Keegan, Elfeet, Murray, Harvey, Voltaire, Christopher, iStarly TV, Brandon King. We gotta let Patreon load the rest of the names. Come on. Peach, Farmer, Fox, Chris, Jonathan, Nico, Hayden, Robert, Naleb, Michael, Luke, Mike, Jordan, Matthew, Kevin, Prime Rib, Kelvin, John, Craig, Launchpad, McQuack, Holden, Nicholas, Bear, Michael, Andrew, Chris, Amanda, Gone Core Fishing, It's a Boy. Caleb, Gary, Matt, Jordan, Caleb, T-Hubs, Sharkfin, Tanner, Murrin, Roger, Jesse, Antonio, Brian, Trevor, Michael, Brandon, Brayden, Nick, Orange Avenger, Half Full Reviews, Shira, Smacky the Frog, Zarni, Load It Patreon, Load It Man, Sparky, Coop, Dragon, uh, Daniel Dragon, dot, 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 uh, that's their name, A- Anime Gravy, Hazelnut, Joseph, Travy, Alex, Julie, Cordell, Dylan, Steve, Sarah, and William. This is just getting longer every week. I appreciate everybody's support, and I hope to see you at some of the giveaways, some of the Patreon raid nights, and we're going to be doing some more events here in the near future, so I hope to see you guys at more of these Patreon things, and I will catch you all on the flip-flop.